For this example, the first thing we should make note or that should jump out at us is our tan squared x. It tells us we're going to want to use one of our Pythagorean identities. The one we want to use, well, let's look at all of them. We have sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. We have tan squared plus 1 equals secant squared. And cotan squared plus 1 equals cosecant squared. So we want to use this middle one with tan squared. We're going to plug that in for tan squared to get that tan squared x over 1 plus secant x equals secant x or secant squared x minus 1 over 1 plus secant x. Okay. What you then need to be able to recognize is that secant squared x or minus 1 is the difference of squares. Both secant squared and 1 are perfect squares, and so they factor into secant x plus 1 and secant x minus 1. And look at that, secant x plus 1 cancels with 1 plus secant x in the denominator, leaving just secant x minus 1. Okay, we're going to stop it there, and what we're going to do is go back up, that was side 1, and we're going to now play with side 2. In side 2, we have 1 minus cosine x all over cosine x. What we can do is we can break this fraction into two different fractions. So we can break it up, giving us 1 over cosine x equals, or not equals, minus cosine x over cosine x, which reduces down to 1 over cosine x minus 1, so our cosines cancel. And 1 over cosine x is the reciprocal property with secant, so we get secant x minus 1. Thus, side 1 matches side 2. And we've shown that since both sides equal secant x minus 1, then they are indeed equal to each other. Okay, uh, let's see. If you really want an extra practice problem just for fun, you could also try this one. Look at cosine x, cotangent x, all over 1 minus sine x, minus 1, and we want to show that this is equal to cosecant x. All right, so let's try, let's work with the more complicated side, this left side, and make it a little bit more manageable. So we're going to focus on this more complicated side. Okay, first things first, I'm going to rewrite cotan in terms of sine and cosine. I get cosine x times cosine x over sine x all over 1 minus sine of x minus 1 equals cosecant x. Okay. Next, what I'm going to end up doing is multiply through the cosine squareds. So I get this for the numerator, and then we're dividing by 1 minus sine x. which then becomes cosine squared x all over sine of x times 1 minus sine of x minus 1. If you see a 1 minus or 1 plus sine or cosine, what you're going to want to end up doing is actually multiplying it by its pair to make it into a Pythagorean identity.